Hi guys, it's Krista from Playing With A Purpose. And today I'm gonna to do a collab with Julie from Learn To Play. And as daycare providers, I think we can all appreciate how hard it is to keep up with storage demands. And today we're going to be focusing on how we store all of the things. If you're new here, my name is Krista and I'm a childcare provider for up to five children between the ages of one and four. And on my channel, you'll find tips and tricks, all things related to childcare, shopping hauls, and the odd family vlog. Julie and I definitely share a lot of the same passions. We both absolutely love what we do. I can see from Julie's YouTube channel that she absolutely adores all the things that she's put into her home daycare and it's so fun to watch her videos. She's so creative. She has a real knack for thrifting and throwing a whole bunch of things together for different themes. So I encourage you to check out her channel, Learn to Play. If you're a homeschooling mom, a daycare provider, a kindergarten teacher, you know how hard it is to store all the things that we have in our classrooms. So today I'm gonna to just show you all the things that I have implemented in the last several years to make my life a lot easier. Because I operate a theme-based program, I started with all the toys I had and tried to divide them up by theme. And the toys that don't belong in any sort of theme, I separated and put in a different category. So the first section of toys you're gonna see are sort of just anytime toys. It's toys that I can just rotate in and out at any time. These toys here don't fall in any theme category, so I just pull out these toys to fill in some gaps on the shelves when I need some more items. I also have this big drawer system, and so I have Lakeshore Learning People in here, and then here I have, this is the Melissa and Doug wooden set, and then in here I have the Melissa and Doug house set. These are some wooden blocks. And this drawer is the bristle blocks. And here's some Tinker toys. And then the next two drawers are Lego. And the last drawer, Magnetos. I find it a lot easier to have certain dedicated spaces in my daycare that I can pull non-theme related items off the shelf. This next section is all theme related bins. To give you an idea of what I store in these bins, I thought I would just show you some of the things that I have stored in them. So this bin is one of my spring bins. I actually have three spring bins right now. As I collect, sometimes I need more than one bin. So in here I have a bird puzzle. We haven't used this one yet because when I ordered it, we were closed for five months. And then I just have some theme related books in here. These are some, different spring props. So little gardening shoes. This is a great spring toy. It's a green toy and it has all the parts you need to build a garden. So this is always a fun spring toy. And then I have a whole bunch of these little birds. Have like a real nest, a hate rainbow toy, some spring Lego. So that should give you an idea of what kind of things I store in these themed bins. I also have an Ikea wardrobe in this room and in here I just store all the different dress up items. Sometimes if I have room in the themed bins, I'll just put them right inside the themed bins, but oftentimes I don't have room. And so then I just store it in here. And sometimes I'll add a little sticky note into the themed bin so that I remember that I have the items in this closet. In the bathroom, I have this big shelf. It's actually a TV stand or something that I got off one of the swap and sell sites. And it works perfectly to store all the diapers. So I'm able to put quite a few diapers for each child up here along with their wipes. And then I use the top to just store if I have extras. And then right here I have my first aid kit. My change table actually has a storage feature. So on one side, there's a set of stairs that come out. And then on the other side, on the bottom here, I'm able to store some park t-shirts, some gloves, boogie wipes, 
diaper rash creams, and extra wipes. Under the sink here, I store some extra hand soap, cleaners, and garbage bags. And in here we have extra towels. I ha always have a basket of face cloths in here for drying hands off. So typically I have my sensory table right here, but right now we're doing individual sensory containers. So I've removed that sensory table for now. So in these two cupboards is where I store all the things that I use in my sensory table. This is something that I would love to see how other teachers store all their items for the sensory tables. I find I run out of room so quickly. As you can see, I have two dedicated cupboards and I still run out of space all the time. So I'm super curious how teachers store all their stuff. So if you guys have great ideas, please contact me on my Instagram account called Playing With Purpose. I'd love to hear your clever ideas. Right above my writing center, I have a set of cupboards. Above here, I store a lot of my art supplies. Things like bingo dabbers and crayons and markers and paints, glue. It's all stored up here. You might see some of these labels. I purchased these off Teachers Pay Teachers and I believe they're from Pocket of Preschool. I have two great big cupboards here. And so in these cupboards, starting at the top, I have some Christmas toys and this bin here is for Mother's Day. And then I have a bunch of bins with practical life tabletop activities that I store right here. And then I have some different types of building toys here. They're, they're mostly transportation related. And then I actually have one more set right here and I just didn't have room there. Again, I recommend using clear containers so that you can always see what's inside your things. That helps a lot to stay organized. But I also find labeling everything that you can also helps to keep things organized. So in this container, I have all my light table stuff. And then I also have a few other light table related things right here. And then moving down, I have different materials that I use for art. So ribbons, counters, pipe pleaters, tape, felt, buttons, pom-poms, rocks, cubes, clothes pins, popsicle sticks, so many different things. And then, so I have like tons of tissue paper. Sometimes I run into miscellaneous things and I'm not sure where to put it. So I just have one bin marked miscellaneous. So try to label as many things as possible. And down at the bottom here, I have a bin full of different puppets. I have shells and rocks, story sets. I have a couple of bins with things that I use for parent gifts. And then I have my dustpan and broom. And in the second big cupboard, I have starting at the top. These bins here are for when I set up different dramatic play centers. And so all the items are stored in one bin. And then that way, when I'm changing something up, I can easily just put it away and it's all gonna be together and I don't have to go looking for things. I can just grab the bin and set it up. So anything that I need for that will be in, the, in these bins. So in this one, I have a grocery store set up and I have these little baskets that I use to store some of the items. I have signs for the walls, um, laminated grocery shopping lists. So all the things that I need are all stored in one bin. And then I love using these 12 by 12 storage bins. They're iris bins, I believe, and you can buy them at Michael's. So these bins are a little bit different than the big bins that I showed you. This one is more, I'll show you. These might be games that I've laminated. This is an under the sea themed one. So there's different under the sea creatures in here. Little notepads, some different 
pens, some little foamies. So just like the storage in the room, if there's like, if there's items like say sequins, um, if I'm going to use it for just anything, then I might store it in the cupboard over there with all the random tissue paper and pipe cleaners and things like that. But if they're specific to a certain theme, then I like to throw them inside these theme bins so that I have them all at my fingertips in one spot already collected. So I hope that makes sense. So I have these little mini erasers. shells and stickers and some stamps. Sometimes I keep a sample copy of something we've done in the past. So that way when I'm lesson planning, it, I have some ideas to start with. I've talked about these drawers before and I can link the video below, but I'll go over it really quickly. I use this colorful drawer system for table time work. So I just pull out different activities for the children to do when say I'm making lunch so these are like pulling ribbon so all different things that the children can do during table time I had somebody specifically ask me to do a video on what I do with my Monday to Friday drawers and I have that filmed so stay tuned for that and in here I have all my science and math manipulatives, so scoopers, test tubes, magnets, magnifying glasses, droppers, goggles, rocks, corks, different measuring manipulatives, flashlights, some dice, some bean bags, all sorts of different things. And then moving up, I have a lot of different bookshelves around my room. I have a lot of books in my classroom and so storing them in an efficient way that I can grab and go when I need them is super important. Also above my cupboards, I store more of our themed boxes. So you can see that above my cupboards, I try to make use of that space as well for more of those theme boxes. So inside the cupboards, I have them labeled. I use this book storage, but sometimes I have more books I can fit inside. And so, so I usually just put them beside so I know that anything from here over is all ABC related books. And the same goes here. So anything this way is color related. Across the classroom, I have these, these cupboards. And again, I try to label everything. It just makes it so much easier to be able to grab and go. So instead of rummaging through a bunch of things, I can just grab, if I need dry erase markers, I can just grab them. In this cupboard here, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there are some, I there are toys that I use that um, might be table time work or toys that I can just grab for any time, not theme related at all. So this is one of those spaces that has all sorts of different activities in them. And over here, this is where I store more books. And above here is a bunch of different binders. The way I store themes is on the side I'll write what themes are inside the binder so in this one I have spring plants bugs all about me and fall so if I'm doing any one of these themes then I would take out this binder so if I have laminated things I can just put them in the pouch in the front here so each weekly theme I have in the front and then if I have any curriculum that goes along with it I just put it alongside it and then I store the things in page protectors so I can just put the items that are laminated already in the back. So for instance here I have some already prepared activities and so I would just slip them in the page protector and they're ready to go the next time I need to use them. 
So it's just an easy way for me to be able to have all the things that I need all in one place. So over here I have another cupboard and again there are all sorts of different books and all organized by themes. Over here you can see I have some more cupboards. These cupboards I've had for many 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 years whereas all of these last few cupboards that you've seen, all of these cupboards I got new a couple years ago. So in the first one these ones are more books and some puzzles. And in the next couple, I have a lot of building materials. So these are all building related toys. So I have some wedgets, some foam blocks, some Melissa and Doug castle blocks, some theme related Legos. So if I have a theme related Lego, I like to keep them together rather than mix it in with all the plain ones. And up here I have some magnetic building cars. This is a, a colored nesting building toy. And then I have some Melissa and Doug stacking sets and some Grimm's toys here. And then again, in the next cover here, I have some Melissa and Doug blocks, a lot of different types of blocks in this cupboard. So I have some chalkboard ones. I have some shape ones. I have the Grimm's cave. I have geometric shapes. And then over here, these toys here are mostly number, letter, and color toys in this cupboard. And then in the next cupboard are mostly puzzles. And in this cupboard, again, there's a lot of different toys that are individually marked. So I can easily see through them because they're clear. And then I also have them labeled. I have some Viewmaster toys, some magnetic car sets, a tea set, some planes, roly-poly cars, sorting stones, train pieces, self-correcting alphabet, some nuts and bolts. So you can see that there's a lot of different types of activities in here, but I can pull them out at any time. In this cupboard, I have mostly board games. And the last place I'm going to show you is just under the stair storage right here. And in here I have more theme related storage and I reorganized this under the stair space last year and it's been wonderful. It's so much easier to keep things organized. And so I just have everything in bins. And then up here, I'm able to put some of our ride-on toys. I also have one more area that I store all my large items. If I have larger ride-on toys or trampolines or shopping carts, anything that takes up a lot of space, some of my outdoor toys that I put away for winter, I store that out in my shed. I hope you enjoyed this video showing you how I store all my items. This has made my life so much easier. It was a lot of work, it didn't happen overnight. It took me a couple years to get things really the way I wanted them, but it makes things so much easier when it comes time to switching up my classroom. And don't forget to check out Julie's channel on Learn to Play. I'll link her video below. I'm super excited to see how she stores all her things. I'm Krista with Playing With A Purpose. I'll see you next time.